Well, hi, this is uh, Chuck. It's been a long time since my last aquaculture update. Well, we managed to keep the fish alive over the winter and make a few more babies. But uh, let me show you what I've got going on today. We have two IBC containers. Each one holds a thousand liters of water maximum, 264 gallons. These two systems are connected together via two inch PVC pipe. These are uniseals. They cost about six dollars a piece. You make a three inch hole, slip that thing in there, put in your PVC pipe, and it works very, very well. I gotta say, this is uh, when the pipe gets quite large, it's kind of tough getting that PVC pipe inside the uniseal. So I use some uh, good old plumber's grease. And for this particular application, I had to go in one and through the other. So I simply put a 45 degree bevel with a grinder on the edge of that pipe and it went in quite nicely. Okay. You can see the uh, result here. On the inside I have a 90 degree elbow and I have a pipe running down about 4 inches off the bottom of this. Okay. On the other side I have a 90 degree and a pipe and you can still see the water flow. The system is uh, driven by this pump here. It's, uh, I think it's a 620 gallon per hour pump I bought it from Harbor Freight. Okay. I should pump uh, all the water here more than one time per hour uh, because I do have a uh, probably about a four or five foot head. You look up, okay the water is being pumped to the top. Well, let me explain this system here. Uh, that's a, uh, a, 90, a 90 degree up there being connected to the, uh, the hose which is going down the pump. Uh, the other end is threaded, it's connected to a coupling device. That coupling device is threaded on one side and it's a slip, meaning it's smooth on the other. And there's a, uh, I think a three quarter inch PVC tube. It goes down approximately one foot and at the end there is a T. Now what happens is the water then runs through that pipe and splits at the end. Okay. Now at the top, see right up here, there's a standoff pipe. So what happens is this T on this pipe right here acts as a little vortex device. It creates a water flow in there, this disturbance, which helps separate some of the solids. I've been using this uh, for about a year now on a couple other applications. It does a pretty good job separating the solids from the water. And then uh, the water, which is cleaner, then comes in the pipe, and then runs down to the bottom. Through the bucket, there's a uh, little box connector, and the box connector is uh, it's a two-inch diameter box connector. I buy them in the electrical conduit section at Lowe's. There's an end cap with a bunch of holes drilled, uh, sort of on the edges, which causes the water to flow kind of like a shower into this bucket and this bucket right here is sitting on top of these two metal poles that are running through. Below here I have fiber fill. That's that stuffing uh, that you get from Walmart. Here's what it looks like. Okay, a little polyfill. Okay, now on this side I've got some large holes drilled and then at the base I have holes. Now what's going to happen is I also have a whole bunch of holes drilled in the bottom of that bucket. So as the water is coming through, it's being filtered through the fiber fill and it comes out of the bottom into the grow bed. Now what's going to happen, that filter is going to get clogged and as it does, water will start coming out of those larger holes at the bottom and then it will work its way up. Now from the, our kitchen window, I can see these holes. So when I see water coming out of these holes up here, I know it's time to change the fiber fill. Uh, when the tank is stocked, I'll be changing that about every five to seven days. Here's a grow bed. Here's an old uh, tomato. This I, I started from a cutting from a plant that I had over in this system, uh, probably in November. My daughter helped me take some fencing and build some covers. Now we do have some uh, raccoons around here. And we have some birds of prey that like to fly about. And I hate to think I get my one and a half pound tilapia in there and one of these birds or the raccoon come along and claims it for, uh, for a meal. I have lost a couple goldfish over the last few months because this area right here is open. Uh, the last goldfish uh, about a week ago 
had uh, these uh, claw marks through it and uh, it was still alive floating on the surface but it was quick it was soon to soon to die so um, we went ahead and pulled that out and added it to our confederate jasmine bed okay so this thing right here is a loop siphon if you haven't seen them it's the simplest system in the world to get to operating I know this because I've tried many times with the auto siphon and I'm just not very skilled or perhaps I'm too impatient so if you have ADD you're impatient leave the auto siphon alone buy yourself a kit but this is pretty nice this is just a one inch uh, PVC and that's the uh, uh, here's a box connector okay there's the uh, the mail on the other side I put some silicon on here or some sealant aquarium sealant and then it comes to this 90 to this tube and you can see the water level there meaning that's going to be tracking the water levels here which about an inch below this is adjustable okay so you can adjust the level of the water in the grow bed ideally you would like the water to drain completely down so, so here the water starting to come and as it's starting to come out of the uh, the tube into the bottom you'll notice this level here ignore the markings for a second but here's the tube it's almost horizontal but this water level is here and it's about an inch higher than here so what will happen is this water flows out as it's doing now it's a very good flow this level is going to rise okay and then gravity is going to keep in, uh, create a natural flow which will come over to here I got a couple of fish I put in here today I went to the the garage system and netted those two out the larger one is a male and just uh, the water is about 71 degrees Fahrenheit and already that male has been um, running its nose into the side of the female this is behavior we've observed in the last year as males are trying to get females to lay eggs okay so these guys are juveniles they are born around Thanksgiving time frame this is uh, April 1st I believe so we have about five oh four and a half five months of growth on these fish uh, the only electrical load of course is the pump and if it, you guys work if you work with water you work with pumps and that's going over there to that uh, junction box and there's a, a GFCI a ground fault circuit interrupter and you certainly like to have have those around okay. I got this little temperature uh, uh, sensor here on eBay for about four or five dollars and I've got about four or five of these I like to use to take temperatures and so uh, those are good things to have if you don't have anything uh, there's the uh, the goldfish uh, pond I put in our little pond liner there's two pumps one is moving water in to circulate it for airflow the other pump is coming up to here uh, this pipe drops down into another T which is below the lid I made a funnel and an uh, inverted funnel Okay, and that separates the solids nicely. There are holes in that lid so the water can come through over here into the fiber fill. Okay, and we've been throwing plants over here just to get them to root. We use uh, put a lot of cuttings over here, and um, this system worked nice. We had a, a few good uh, tomato plants there last year. Our problem was uh, with uh, caterpillars, these uh, these tomato worms. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you in the garage. Now this is where we've uh, wintered our fish over. Oh, let me step back so you can get a good view. Got a couple of totes up up there. Uh, you can see the uh, the plants. Zoom in on them. Uh, these plants are growing quite nicely, and there's some really deep, dark uh, uh, color to those leaves. It's full of nitrates. Okay, in this system here, I do have two pumps. So let me. Uh, pull this here over and I'll turn on a light and I don't know if you see any fish oh there's a couple I've been conditioning them to come up to uh, to eat uh, let me grab some food I buy 40 pound bags of feed from the uh, the feed store for about 18 to 20 dollars these guys are going through about 12 handfuls per day you just put them right here All right, this fish here about eight or nine inches long. Uh, we have some that are uh, nearly a foot. 
I have a little pump inside here. All it's doing is just circulating a water and uh, hitting and disturbing the surface. It's just agitating it, aerating the surface. I have two different loop siphons here. Okay. Now there's a pump down at the bottom. I think it's a 264 gallon pump. 264 gallon per hour or pump from Harbor Freight. It's pumping up into here and of course this here has got fiber fill. As you can tell, I need to change the filters. Okay, because I have holes in the bottom, the fiber fill, and it's getting clogged up. There you go. Nice clogged, cool, filled fiber. Then on the other side, climb up. This too needs to be uh, clean. Now what's happening here is as this water level rises, there's another uh, pipe. This is an inch and a half. There's a uniseal. It comes down into here. Okay. So. so there you see a similar system. Water is draining down in the bucket. It goes to the bottom, and then you see water is rising up. Get that little standoff pipe, and then it comes out the end down there. And then I pump it back up through here, up into that grow bed. So the last thing I do today is I'll change out these fiber fill filters. Check my fish. You see, I bet I can feed them another handful. I guess the neat thing about aquaculture is you get to play with science. There's lots of learning about the, uh, the bacteria and building systems to pump water and to give you good quality water. Uh, this uh, system here could be uh, cleaned a little bit more, but I can say that the fish are actually pretty healthy. Uh, we hope to eat some here starting uh, next month or so. And uh, what I'll do is I'll pull a couple of fish out and we're going to put them in a, another 55 gallon barrel with just clean water and a pump. We won't feed them for a couple of days. I understand that that helps kind of clean out their system and it'll give you a better tasting fish. Okay. All right. What I'd like to do now is just show you what we're doing on the inside. Uh, my wife's been very gracious. I got to kick these boots off. Okay. Let's just bring it around to here. Okay, this is a breeding tank. Okay. And there's the male. And he's over there on the left, and there the females are on the right. And if you look down there, all of that rock has been moved. That's been moved by the male. Okay, the male has created a nest. Okay, that is his signal to the five females that he's ready for them to begin laying eggs. Okay. Now in this particular system, I've got a pump that's about 264 gallons per hour. These pumps are around $20, so they're quite nice to work with. There's a 300 watt uh, electric heater inside, 55 gallon tank. Okay, the pump rises up in the black hose, comes up to here, comes into this little trash can I picked up from Goodwill. The water's flowing into here, down into the fiber fill. I'm able to rotate this around and change it out. This is an overflow. You should always put overflows on everything. So things do clog up. Okay, and there's some plants that have been growing and we have a bunch of mums in here. We have this tomato plant that's trying to take over. Fighting for light. Uh, these are great for putting in cuttings and starting them uh, to root. And then my wife transplants it, plants them to small pots. Okay, so they'll make the babies in here. When the babies are okay, are hatched and the mother releases them, we'll put them in one of these little uh, breeding cages. And I'll set that over here in this tank. Okay. And we have some uh, small fish in here. These are no bigger than maybe an eighth of uh, I mean a half an inch. Okay, so we like to keep these here. These are what I call small fry. And I'll put the, uh, the new uh, hatchlings inside this uh, cage on the inside. When they get over a half inch I like to fetch them out and like to place them over here. The reason why is that these fish in this tank here will cannibalize the, the, the newborn and fish are less than half an inch. 
I'll grow these so they're about one and a quarter inch. These are medium sized fry. And then I put them down here. Okay. Okay. And I'll grow these to about three, three and a half inches. And here's another uh, grow bed. And there's some mint. It's pretty leggy. Uh, leggy because there's not, not uh, a lot of light in here. But it's really nice. Uh, adds to the, uh, the a nice effect here of making your garden room. I'm going to go ahead and feed these fish right here in the breeding tank. Let's see if they want to eat. There you go, guys. There's some fish. Here's some uh, food for you guys. Uh, there's a couple of small fish in here, about two, three inches long. I put them in there just to see if they would be cannibalized, and so far they have not been cannibalized. Okay. These are um, a mix between blue and Nile tilapia. Okay. Put my hand up here. It's about seven inches long there. You'll see the, uh, the scale of these guys and gals. Okay. Well, that's about it for my uh, tilapia experiment. See you next time.